Okay, welcome back to the podcast. This is Bed Bug Specialist Podcast. And this episode, we're going to be talking about rodent control. So um, this is a time of year where we get a lot of calls about rodents, uh, specifically mice and rats, getting into people's homes and kind and just kind of uh, wreaking havoc, you know. Of course, when you look at uh, rodent control, we're in the Midwest, so we kind of get all, um, all types of weather around here. So thus, um, we do, uh, of course, mice and rats are, you know, they live all year round. But, uh, of course, during the fall and winter, when, you know, temperatures drop, they tend to come into home. So with, um, we get a lot, get a lot more calls, uh, for that kind of service in the winter, um, mostly. Um, and so, uh, so it's not to say like we never deal with rodents or, um, any other time of year, but we do see kind of a, a, a jump in calls for that service and the winter time and fall time. So, so yeah. Um, and so I'm going to go over a few techniques, a few different things to know, um, during, um, um, when it comes to rodent control, pest control, um, in our, you know, in, in, in what we do in in our uh, company. And so, yeah, so this is just some advice to give out. Of course, um, you know, you definitely want to, speak with a professional before trying to do it yourself um youtube's usually never enough um and it usually works only you know nine times out of ten it doesn't work right so but it's always going to be somebody that can find you know um that can get get it going or or you know can figure it out you know through do-it-yourselfers but uh, just just some things um, if you want to do it yourself um, or in kind of the techniques that we have when it when coming to uh, when it when coming to dealing with rodents getting in your home so so first of all um, the tech the the biggest things when it comes to rodent controls of course we the reason why we want to keep rodents out of our house because they can carry diseases they can um, destroy uh, piping wires um, the fecal matter is um, is um, is toxic um, uh, and they they can destroy your home uh, uh, we've even seen certain cases um, and it's very rare but you've seen cases where um, rodents even started fires in certain houses because they chewed through certain electrical uh, outlets in different areas and started even fires so that's uncommon but it could happen so um so yeah and just the the idea of them leaving feces around your food in your food uh they carry a lot of diseases um so yeah um uh, you know and and just can destroy you know make holes in your home and just kind of over time devalue your home, you know? So you definitely want to keep rodents out of your home. So uh, a few things that we do to tackle rodent control in people's homes is, or buildings, um, facilities, whatever, is, is exclusion. The first thing is seeing how the pest got in the home. So this means maybe a visual inspection outside um, of the home or building and also inside um, a visual um, inside and usually there is a, as a professional we kind of know the the first places to go to to look for to see if um, where how where and how the pests are getting in and so that can be several ways of uh, loose uh, I actually we actually have a video on our YouTube channel uh, Tulsa Pe- uh, Uh, our YouTube channel there is a video um, I can't remember what it's called Um, 
anyway, but uh, I can link it link it in this um, description. I can link it in the um, description of this podcast. So anyway, um, sorry with the ums, but uh, I'm still learning to get that out of my vocabulary when when talking. But so the um, the best things is uh, and I'll, again like exclusion. And so some of the places where to find. Um, past uh, or to find how they can get in uh, easy easy places is of course they can come from the roof um, we've seen rats and mice crawl up um, trees fall down from the tree onto the roof even depending on what kind of brick or what kind of um, um, uh, siding you've got they can even climb up the uh, brick and get in through the roof there's holes or um, siding that could be loose you know in different areas to kind of where they can inch in and just remember like as far as mice go they can mice can fit inside a hole as small as a dime and rats they can fit in a hole as small as a quarter or a little bigger than a quarter so just remember that so that's all it takes for to get one mice or rat in your home so so yeah um so yeah the roof is one place another place is a garage door or the garage um yeah the um uh the garage door if you have a side door next to the garage those are always kind of a little more deteriorated around the the um around the edges and then a garage door itself that where um what's the i can't even think of the what you call the garage door the bay doors i don't know but um yeah sometimes that's not sealed enough good enough at the cracks i know i have i have a gap on the side of my garage door so that's an easy place for rodents to get in um another place could be um uh, if you have a crawl space if you have a crawl space there's endless amounts of places where they can get in under the crawl space so just making sure everything's sealed up from there to the home it is so they again they might can be able to get in the crawl space but they at least keep it to where they can't get in the home so doing an inspection under there too could be beneficial we don't usually crawl in the crawl spaces for rodents but um that is something you could do to definitely um eliminate eliminate the places where they could be you know coming in um let me see another place could be uh um there is um fittings around the uh, ac unit or um around fireplace you uh, if you have a fireplace there's areas like that could be deteriorating or that could be uh loose to where they can get in there so definitely check those areas out um you know there's different um 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 area there's different solutions when it comes to kind of sealing and and um sealing up these areas so that they can't get in the cracks crevices areas the the voids the holes the you know again they can eat their way through a lot of different materials so really all they need really is time so being careful on um trying to find these places uh, the you know the um, and then you know another place is the attic they can because there some attics are vented in a certain way and that that where it allows air to move about the attic but sometimes again it could be a small enough area where or big enough area to where a mice or a rat can get in so definitely an attic is a, a favorite place we see where um, rats and mice like to hang out and then also it's a great place for them to have a family so if they're pregnant that's a great place that insulation is a great little bedding for them to to have their um, um, pups so yeah so anyway um, those are a few places now a few things to use to um, keep the pest out or, or to seal up these areas is you know there's many things we can we have chicken wire we can use 
uh, to seal up uh, foam. There's different kinds of foam. Um, there's caulking that you can use. Um, there's, um, uh, you know, there's different tent like plates of metal you can screw in to different parts of the wood on the in the house. Um, there's also um, even there's this kind of not uh, this really um, fine. Uh, wood that you can get of course that's always but um there's like a breakable part of wood i can't think of the name of it right now but that is a great um material to um to use to just kind of seal up holes around the house and areas where they can get in so yeah so those are uh, kind of the things so again exclusion is one thing we really have to look at as professionals when it comes to controlling pests because then we, you know, we can kill the pests when they get in, but then they can keep getting in. So the idea is to kind of eliminate them from getting in and then eliminating them from once they're in the home. So, yeah. So, again, another, I, uh, and so a few things we do once they're inside the home, a few things to get rid of them or to kill them um, is different traps and different baits. Now, another um, deterrent we can put out as f outside exterior is we can put at bait stations. And these bait stations, what they do is they, you know, a, a, a mouse or a rat is looking to get in a home and they see a station and they're like, they see a little black box. Of course, um, uh, rodents, they love holes. They love little hiding spots. They love dark places. J and they're and mice specifically are very curious so they're even though they're looking for a place to get in your home they're also looking for food as well so these bait stations have bait inside them and they're like hey this is a play the good place to hang out stay stay away from the elements stay warm and then also get a little meal and so they get of course they eat the bait get the meal and then they die right um a little simplistic but yeah you know the bait is really tasty to them but also it's poisonous so it eats them up on the insides um, different baits work different ways and that can be another video or another um, podcast for another day on different uh, um, rotocides um, um, and what they do um, uh, bait blocks or there's different words or um, phrases you can use but um, but rodent bait is probably the the most common. Um, rotocide is 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 the the term you use um, uh, as well. But yeah. So anyway, um, so that's an that's a ex, that's a solution for exterior, um, 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 and that and that's more so to keep them out before they get in. And so a lot of commercial company, you, and you probably seen one and didn't even know you seen it. Um, anytime you go through a drive through, you can always, if you look down, you see a little black box that has a hole on two on both sides. That's a rodent box. And hopefully you're seeing them at fast food restaurants. If you're not, that's a problem. Um, you might see them in the back of restaurants as well. If you ever went back behind a restaurant, um, it, I think in some law in some states it varies, but you need to have a um, it, ha it needs to be weighted because sometimes the wind could blow it or kids can pick it up or even rodents can you know if it's something bigger like a raccoon or something they can even move it. So um, some boxers some of those um, boxes <coughs> excuse me rodent boxes are weighted down with like a semi, semi, um, cement brick or, or even just um, um, attached to the building or, or to something somehow. So yeah, um, that is a, another solution. So one, and you, and, and a lot of commercial buildings definitely have those because, you know, you definitely don't want to walk into a business and see a rat running, running next to the, um, um, next to the door or beside the building you know definitely if i saw that it might want to might want to uh, make me uh rethink me visiting this um establishment so yeah so that's uh beneficial um 
And so, in also in some of these bait boxes, too outside, they even have traps in them. You can get some that have bait, some have traps, and so they go into the trap to see if there's food, and then they find some. But yet, there's a trap that kills them instantly. So, and that's a little more, um, um, a little more um, instant versus the bait. But with that too, you can only you know kill one or two at a time versus bait can. Uh, a little bit of bait can go a long way you know I think a bait block can depending on the brand you get or the kind you get um, you know a, a block a, I think it's like a two inch block or a one inch block can kill up to about four or five mice I think something about that so don't quote me on that but but anyway um, so once you get in the home once once we're in the home as a technician we've kind of figured out what what's going on as far as um uh, figuring out how to get on we can seal it up with different things if the customer wants sometimes we can't um cause if it's like too big of a hold or too big of a problem or or if it's some something we can't get to then we also put traps and different baits out inside so of course the traps are a little more uh, better because the idea is that sometimes bait can the the idea of some bait is it's supposed to be poison it dries them out but also if they don't die quick enough they go to they could possibly go to an area where you can't get to them and they die and then they leave a smell now i've never had this happen to customers that i've dealt with but um it's definitely possible of happening and the cheaper the bait the easier this is for it to happen so being careful on what type of bait you use and then also um, where you put the bait um, and how much you use is definitely a factor so um, I would definitely if this is somebody that's trying to figure out a do-it-yourself or <coughs> figure st st something out um, um, I would definitely think of, um, of tr not relying on bait um, as much. And so, so yeah, so, um, so anyway, and also inside, if and when, if we did put bait inside, we definitely put a, um, a pet proof and a uh, tamper kid proof uh, tamper box around the bait and what this does is it just it acts as a little um, secure um, um, it just secures the bait so that the kid like so if a kid saw it saw a little block and wanted to eat it which I don't know why they would but or even a dog but you know dogs are a little more curious um, and not to say this is definitely a problem that could happen but you definitely want to um, uh, put it where where you know pets or kids couldn't reach or definitely put it in a bait block and and we put always put them in a um, protector and so this is a little um, device uh, just a little box, a little black box. It look, some of them look just like the big ones outside, but they're a little smaller, and they allow you to put. Um, they allow you to put um, um, a little piece of bait, bait in it, lock it up, and to where so so if a kid did find it, they couldn't open it, or if a dog tried to, a dog could probably chew on the box, but never even get to the bait though. You know, and then um, we put um, uh, put those in certain areas we think the pests are coming or going, and that's just an easy food source for them. And then, of course, it's not really food source; it's poison, so then they die. And so um, we try again. We try not to rely on too much bait, but sometimes we have to and, and to use it in in different situations. It's kind of the best solution. But I mean, that's the I, that's the reason why you call a professional to kind of figure out what to do and and when to do certain things and if it's safe and so on and so forth. So and and then we usually put about two to three different kinds of traps in a home and so. 
uh, there's different traps as far as sticky traps, um, um, the classic trap, you know, you put peanut butter on it or, um, um, and you know, you know, they cross it and it snaps them. There's different kinds of traps that you can reload, um, the sticky traps, um, where they get step on it. I, you know, it's, it's very, um, and we put we put about two to three different traps the idea is if you know my, rats more so are kind of a little more sensitive or in a little more shy a little more smart so they can sometimes even figure out how to get the bait without getting trapped so or sometimes they won't even mess with it so but with mice they're a little simpler so they they're curious about anything and if they see food they're, they're trying to go for it not knowing it's a trap now the idea is too is if they you know um and mice i don't think are as smart to see like i my idea would always think is if i was a rodent or if i if i was a my a mouse and i saw a you know i saw a trap and i saw my brother or sister dead in this trap the next day i if that same trap is there would I um, try to get the cheese in it I mice aren't that smart <laughs> so yeah they they would they would go to that same trap that their brother and sister just got killed in the day before um, rats might not so um, so again that's why you need a professional because we have little tips and tricks that we can use to um, to um get to trap these um mice and um and again some of the mark some of the stuff you can buy like in the store like in walmart or whatever like the the sticky traps i've even seen where rats or even mice have been able to get off those sticky traps so make sure you get a good sticky trap that's really sticky um and again sometimes they're smart enough not to even get on those too so um and so again, we have tips and tricks that we use for different um, techniques on getting rid of mice in a home. Um, it, sometimes it takes a couple of days, takes a couple of weeks. Um, it's been hard um, to get rid of rats sometimes, but we have, de we definitely have techniques. We even have a um, way of monitoring, monitoring them, you know, figuring out, hey, if they don't like this trap, we can try another trap. If they don't like this bait, we can try another bait. Um, so, so yeah, um, but those are kind of the techniques that are pretty common when it comes to dealing with rodents and to over, to review, um, exclusion, sealing up holes, cracks and crevices, different holes and areas that they could get in your home using bait if needed and using traps. Um, these are pretty, the standard techniques to to eliminate pests or to e even prevent them from your home when it comes to rodents so yeah so um that's about it on uh this episode so this podcast is definitely a um way for homeowners to kind of get more educated or even uh professionals to um to you know to compare notes or to um to even learn um so if you have any comments any questions any concerns or even if you want to be on this podcast um we'd love to have you we'd love to get your questions um in the show notes or in the link where you got this information or got or you listening to this there should be um an email um i don't even check my email that much but you can jump on twitter you can jump on um um uh, a lot of different places i think there's even a phone number you can call our you can call our office number just tell us how you found us and 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 we'll jump on and just you know talk talk to you you know with whatever you got so and that number is 918-892-5254 and we're in the Tulsa area if you need service um yeah so um thank you for listening to the podcast we've been trying to uh or I've been trying to keep this up 
we've been you know posting articles here and there about bed bugs we're a full service company that deals with pest control but more so we've specialized in bed bugs so we definitely know our way about around bed bugs but we will do other shows with other pests too as well um, but our job you know our goal is to get our name out there for bed bugs um, more so and we're, we have a way of eliminating them affordably and uh, discreetly um, which is something that a lot of companies don't really can't do but we can so uh, definitely give us a call or a shout give us a shout out for that um, yeah um, give us some five star reviews like share this podcast um, again contact us if you if you have any questions or even want to um, if you have if there's any professionals um, that would like to be on the show that'd be great as well too so um, until next time thanks <laughs>